And now, for the first time since 2019, all we see are packed grandstands, blue skies above, and ready to celebrate a Memorial Weekend Classic. This is, and always will be, the greatest spectacle in racing. This is the Indianapolis 500. The field already spread. Scott Dixon, the pole man, will lead them into turn one. They're spread wide, but they are stacked deep. Cars going two and three wide. I saw Will Power in that red and orange multicolored car making moves to the high side. Down two by two through turn two. The Aero McLaren team teammates side by side. Everyone files two as Alex Palo goes down to the inside of Scott it's Dixon in turn three. The blue and white NTT data Honda, the man who finished runner up last year, takes the lead on the opening lap. Bold move from Alex Palo, especially on his teammate as there's action further back. There's Joseph Newgarden, the golden white car already moving forward. Santino Ferrucci doing what Santino does, hanging on the outside to turn three, four there's Renus VK now looks at the pole sitter and takes him into one. And Dixon's experience says, guys, you have at it. I'm not going to get tangled up in anything early. And you may have noticed Jimmy Johnson in his first 500 had a very nervous moment on the opening lap. Indeed he did. Looking back for Johnson, there he is, the blue car with the neon yellow trim. The 48 is under attack from the young David Malukas looking to the outside. Outside. Malukas, another driver, a rookie driver, but another driver that had a crash on Friday. They had to fully rebuild that car, and that car did not do a shakedown. So this is the first lap in anger for David Malukas. Dixon and his experience, maybe not. Dixon going forward past Rita's VK into turn one. Chip Ganassi Racing now runs 1-2. Told you about people making good progress early on in this 160 500. Have a look at it bottom left of your screen. Rossi, Santino Ferrucci, Devlin De Francesco. Firestone biggest movers. There they are. We'll keep you updated on that as Will Power loses another position to another Arrow McLaren Chevy running in this race. There's only been one Swede to win the Indy 500 as the fight is on between the teammates, or is it a fight? Maybe that was a strategic move as Dixon retakes the lead it's in a, a PNC Bank Honda. If it's a bit like the Peloton here where the teammates, I think, are going to take turns leading at the front. Why are they doing that? Because you'll get better fuel mileage working together than if one car leads out front the whole time. A man on the move is Andretti Autosports' Alexander Rossi. Since the start, Rossi is up five positions and not hanging around. <laughs> Puts a move there on J.R. Hildebrand. Going into turn three, and this is McLaughlin also up five positions. We're looking out the back of Graham Rahal. McLaughlin to the high side. Easy watch cars. the blend, watch the blend. Here's Renus VK up against Scott Dixon and Alex Pillow. It's going to be the Ganassi one, too, that it'll just right, on out, fly on by. But VK is closer than where he was out. before. <laughs> Here we go. Is this going to be the first little disruption to the Ganassi Bob strategy right formula? Right clear, clear, clear. Major drama here in the early going in the Indy 500. The spectacular young Dutch driver, Renus VK, crashes out of this 106th running. The AMR safety team, as they always are, spot on, fast on the scene. And the 21-year-old climbs from his car. Just what happened? Wow. Big gap between VK and Alex Pillow just got loose down in the middle of turn two. Wow, fireball as the gearbox explodes, dumps probably all the oil out. And I mean, Scott Dixon heads up, having to avoid that accident, looking behind from the back of Alex Pillow. You see a big wiggle. He catches it very similar to that practice crash from Colton Herta. But somebody, Kevin Lee, who wasn't really enjoying things again, was Team Penske's Will Power. Tell us more. He said the car was really good the first half of the first end, then just went wicked loose. They made changes on the stop, no better. So they came in again under this yellow and then stalled it as well coming that out. Lost a few more spots. So he's all the way back to 30th. A lot of work to do for Will Power. As we get ready to go back to racing, almost quarter race distance. Let's get back to it here. The 106th Indy 500. Three Chip Ganassi Racing Hondas up front, but there's a bunch of Chevys, four wide. Bad start from Felix Rosenquist, Santino Ferrucci, Takuma Sato, and Tony Kanata up the inside. Look at all this position change.
That was an incredible run. I think Santino Ferrucci comes out okay in that deal. Sato went right around the outside. The two-time Indianapolis 500 winner. We're on board with Connor Daly. A lot of big eyes right now Daly because at Indianapolis, Adelaide. restarts means opportunity as Tony Kanaan to the inside of Sato there in the purple car. That's a Ryan Hunter race special down into turn three, but a great drive from the number one Tony Kanaan to get that position. This white and blue car for Chip Ganassi Racing. He wants to get up with his teammates, and he is getting there. Four Ganassi cars in the top six, and this is award to the inside of Erickson to that orange and black car. Oh, Callum Eilat, big crash inside at the exit of turn two. The Hunkos Hollinger rookie is out of the Indy 500. Oh boy. So another one of the youngsters in the field crashes out in spectacular style as Alex Pillow made it to pit road. Hey, Diff, he entered the pits when it was closed. They told him to drive oh. by, so we have to watch what happens here with Alex Below. He didn't catch the light. He came in when pit road was closed. That's exactly what happened to Scott Dixon last year on the initial stop. Good to see Callum Eilat, the young British driver, out of the car under his own steam and walking and talking with the AMR safety team. This is what happened. Just loses it. Looks a lot like Renus VK in a very similar spot. Much earlier in the corner, it seems like he lost the back end, got all the way around on board from Christian Lungard right now, not knowing which way to go, trying to keep his own car from spinning out, hitting debris. Have to worry about a puncture now from that sharp shards of carbon fiber. And then here's Polo, and take a look. There's going to be a yellow light. You see it come on yep. right before he gets to this line. That's the pit commit line. He was so close to getting away with that. This is very much going to change the structure of his race. In real time, it just looks so savage. And some big pieces of debris that likely were collected by a few of those trailing cars in that second hit to the inside wall nearly head on. A massive, massive hit for the rookie driver. All of a sudden, it goes from total dominance and control from Chip Ganassi Racing, just completely uh, managing the race, this lap. Hit, 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 this lap. to this two racetrack one. managing those two drivers. And Townsend, they're going to have to bring the 10 down pit road, and the pit road will not be open. So emergency service here for Alex Blow. Again, they thought they could make it until they were able to open pit road. They will not be able to. I mean, Chip Ganassi has got to be sitting here diff thinking, what do I have to do to win this race as a team? The end of the second caution period. Let's go back to racing. Watch the white and blue American Legion car. Fifth in shot there. Here goes O'Ward. Here goes Kanan. Look at this into turn one. Inside, clear. Four wide behind Good them. Job, Connor. Go now. They seem to figure it out. Connor held off Otto Award into turn one. And now he's going to chase down Scott Dixon, trying to get that lead back. Looks like Award had to check up a little bit there. That bunches up the whole rest of the field as Kanan goes to the high side of that white car on his teammate Marcus Erickson. Kanan, no, has to back out. Erickson holds the position. Grosjean tucks in behind Sykes Karam ahead of Graham Rahal. Devlin D. Francesco running the high line through turn three, trying to make up some ground, find some clean air to get onto his front wing as a pass with a lead is coming. Connor Daly in that number 20 blue and gold pit Nile car stays in line behind Scott Dixon. Not twice, didn't he? He thought twice, and that was smart. The phrase, there goes our plan, was uttered on the radio a little <laughs> while ago for Scott Dixon and his race team. Here we but go. Inside, Connor Daly. Outside. Outside, clear. And you can hear the roar from the crowd. They love Connor Daly at the front. This local lad led 40 laps last year, and the crowd loved every single 40. Somehow, I think. The master, Scott Dixon, knew. Let him go. Let him go for right now. Listen to the crowd. It's almost like watching the wave at a baseball stadium, you know, as Connor comes around the track. Each corner of the grandstands are standing up, and Scott Dixon lining up to take that lead back. Here goes a move for the lead. Connor Daly goes again. Fairly straightforward. There's the yellow submarine. Scott McLaughlin in his second Indianapolis 500 started 26th after a qualifying gamble went wrong. He was in 15th, gave away his time, went again, conditions weren't optimal. And so he started 26th. 
McLaughlin and Elio Castro Neves have been storming through this field. McLaughlin now finds himself 14 positions up. Up 13 spots for Elio as he rides 14. And again, Dixon and Daly swap the lead. Oh, Ward's got his eyes on the big prize. He slid into second, Dave Burns. Connor Daly is in. They're going to take some front wing out for Connor Daly, and they will change the four tires. Very good balance for him. He likes it. He likes being up front there. Remember, he told us he gained knowledge last year running in the top five. Romain Grosjean crashes out of the Indianapolis 500. Another massive hit. Is that at the exit of turn two? I believe it is. Turn two. Has got all three. Has really been a handful today. Yeah. The DHL Honda. Sorry, guys. For Andretti Autosport comes to rest there. Not too far beyond the pit exit. The word sorry, guys, from Romain Grosjean. It's good to hear Romain on the radio. Yeah, I, I think this, these winds are really picking up, Townsend. That's late in the tire stint, right? You're really losing the grip in that tire. The car's starting to slide around more in that dirty air. Track temp at 115 degrees now as we see Romain get out of the car. So these are, this these is, are the toughest part to, to hold on to. Well, it's the end of the stint. And just a couple laps maybe until Grosjean was coming to, into the pits. And let's take a replay and try to figure out exactly what the driver of the 28 was dealing with and like we've seen from VK and Eilat the two drivers that crashed earlier the rear end just steps out in traffic and that is a massive left side hit as you see suspension arms steering arms big pieces of debris going down the racetrack view from Graham Rahal watch, 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 wow. watch, watch, watch. you can hear the debris pinging off the car it just shows you how much Stuff comes off, carbon fiber bits, metal bits, but again, that was a very late snap. It's really oh. happening late in the corner, but look at it in full speed. That steering arm, you can just see it bouncing there, lower left-hand corner of the screen. Luckily, nobody hit that, because that can go right through an oil cooler, a radiator, take out a wing. Unbelievably, same song, second verse for Chip Ganassi Racing. Scott Dixon was coming down pit road. There you see his wife, Emma, in angst right now. They were coming down pit road that lap. They are not sure if he can make it back. Just like his teammate Alex Blow earlier in this race, they're not sure if he can make it back before pit road is open. Dixon doing all he can. Shades of last year for this race team. And there you go. Pits are open. It's going to work out for Dixon. How about that, Dick? Wow. Oh, boy. And a hometown hero going to take the green. When Connor Daly viewed last year's race and the first time the reaction of the fans seeing him take the lead, he kind of half teared up. Well, no time for tearing up now. It's time to go to work, and you have got green, Scott green, Dixon green, green. all over your tail. Let's go back racing. Connor Daly in the lead for back. now. Here now comes Dixon. Outside. Incredible jump from Scott Dixon. Pops Pen award. award. Santino Ferrucci. My goodness. Around the outside of Scott Dixon. Is it going to work? Wow, brave move from Ferrucci. Are you kidding me? Pushing the six-time champ to the high side of turn one. Thought about keeping it there in turn two. Discretion got the better part of Valor's Alexander Rossi in the middle of a three wide down the back straight. Sage Karam and Scott McLaughlin involved there. And Juan Pablo Montoya was following Karam through. They were just touching the edge of the grass. Ferrucci got up to fourth in that limo tint number 23, and it wasn't enough. He wanted more. Now we have to check up, and here comes Felix Rosenquist in that fuse car, but Dixon to the front again. This back and forth, this tag, this is Rosenquist. Oh. Rosenquist thought about it on Ferrucci. No chance. So we see the 26 Gamebridge Honda of Colin Herta being pushed back. We're hearing it's a throttle sensor on that car that's creating the issue. Here comes O'Ward. Here we go. And Ferrucci is released as well. But look up at the top of your screen. There goes Pato okay, O'Ward. Dixon off a two, and That's back. more of a gap than what Rosenquist had. Rosenquist was good, but Award was great on the in and out lap. How does Dixon play this now? As you will have already seen at home, there is a fourth yellow for a fourth crash. Unfortunately for Team Penske, it is Scott McLaughlin who was the highest running of the Team Penske Chevrolet drivers. This is what happened to the driver of the yellow submarine. Whoa, wow, that is big. Wicked, wicked wiggle at the apex of turn four. That could have been turn three, even Townsend. worse. Sorry, three. He 
be stopped in turn four because of the speed you're carrying. And I'll tell you what, guys, once you hit the first time and get rid of that, that crash structure, when you go in a second time, the same way Callum Islet did and the way Scott McLaughlin's doing it right here, that second impact hurts so much. Watch how close Carpenter is. Just stuck to the inside. And I'll tell you what, had he not caught that first one and gotten the nose back, it could have looked a lot like your crash in turn three back in the day, James. That was a brutal angle at a huge entry speed. Let's go back here. 43 to go in the Indy 500. It's the Hunger Games in Indy as everybody wants to take advantage of this restart. Four to five wide mid-pack. All there. there. Ericsson and Ferrucci, they go into turn one side by side. But guys, we saw right there as they're mixing it up in the back exactly why Scott Dixon was on the pole. The speed out of that blue and orange PNC bank car drove right by the McLaren of Pato Award to easily take the point into turn one as they're three Whoa! wide. So it's Karam on the grass. That's Alexander Rossi going three wide into turn three. So up front, Scott Dixon, Pato Award going at it. Award ducks to the inside. You're clear. No drivers led more laps around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway than Scott Dixon as of today. And I know that Pato Award comes. knows that as bumper. he's looking now. Bumper coming inside. Scott inside. Dixon back to the front in turn one. 35 laps to go. There he goes, Johnson. You nailed it into pit lane. Award stays out. Connor Daly looks to be following. Oh, Whoa. Dixon locks up. Is that going to be a pit speed violation? That's the first hiccup we have seen from Scott Dixon today on the final stop of the day. Scott Dixon got caught drive for speeding, here. guys. There you go. Oh. He's going to have to serve a drive through oh, penalty. My goodness. Unbelievable death. Unbelievable. First of all, it was Alex Pillow entering the pits. And Scott Dixon says, come on, are you serious? And there goes Felix Rosenquist to the front of the field at the Indy 500. Dixon, bad luck, strikes again. Unbelievable. And absolutely devastating. The man that's led more laps around the Indy 500 than any other driver in history sees his chance for a win absolutely disappear, pulls off into pit lane to serve what's going to be the longest penalty, most painful penalty of his career. They did make Pato aware the nine has served a penalty. Now it's going to be down to him and his teammate, Felix Rosenquist. This is shaping up nicely for the McLaren organization. You see Felix Rosenquist there entering turn two. He's going to have the lead by a mile behind him. The red and white Husky Chocolates car of Marcus Erickson. Here's the pit time difference. Rosenquist winning on the in lap. Time on pit lane. Time in the box. Except the out lap. Award got it by a tenth as Erickson just got past Pato Award. Chip Ganassi Racing still has a chance. Penalties to Pillow and Dixon took them out of the mix. This is Erickson. Group Here on we strategy. go. Erickson to the inside. This Husky chocolate Honda is flying. Oh, crash, Jimmy Johnson in Whoa. the wall. And this could change everything. Marcus Erickson's teammate, Jimmy Johnson. This will bring out the yellow with six to go. And we might see, yeah, we might see a red flag. It is possible it's been done before. A red flag could completely change the outcome of this race. Jimmy Johnson, we see him moving. That looks like a big hit on the front end, though, Townsend. That's Massive. a very square collision, it looks like. Again, off of turn two. It's just been the, the corner that's caught out the most drivers today. Difficult conditions. The AMR safety team on the scene. See Jimmy moving in the cockpit, working to get out. And but yeah, is, huge is, front end impact if this is something that was heavily discussed with his wife Shani and their daughters about, you know, does he want to do IndyCar ovals? And he said absolutely. And he ran just so well at Texas Motor Speedway earlier this year, was gaining a lot of experience in his first Indy 500. Let a lap. What happened to Jimmy Johnson? So early, it was a completely forward impact. Oh. That is one of the worst angles to hit. But you know what? That nose cone structure did such a great job. As did the safer barrier. And absorbing the contact. As you see, Jimmy stays on the throttle NASCAR style. And I'm afraid that just drives him a little heavier. 
into the fence right there. Turn two has swallowed up so many cars. On board with Dixon, Johnson ahead. That's the second time right in front of yeah. Scott Dixon that's happened. VK was the first. All and right. look at these guys. Red flag. Whoa. Red oh. flag. This changes the game totally. This is going to be a two lap challenge like you have never seen. It's time to bring the action at the Indianapolis 500. Here we go. Who's going to do it? Great restart, Erickson. Phenomenal jump from the number eight. Look at him swerving, trying to break the track. Rosen now Quist. Quist. Award. Rosen Quist and I want on the inside. Tony Kanan is not going to let that happen. Kanan to the high side on the dirty track. Kanan hangs on. And side-by-side -side action is what Marcus Erickson wants to see, but Pazzo Award is now in lockstep. He's going to have a great draft down the back straight, but Mark is trying to break it. They know that there is only one lap to go. When they come to the Yard of Bricks, they'll see the white flag. It's a Swedish snake on the back stretch trying to break the draft. What does Erickson do on the front stretch? Here comes Award with the run. Neither of these two in the front do, have won mark. the Indy 500. There Point is flag. two and a half miles to go. And Award is on the attack. Right here comes Pato. Erickson won't Inside. let it happen. Clear, clear. Phenomenal Inside. driving from both men. I don't know if Award's going to be able to gather it back up. That might have been his big chance. They exit two and go to the back stretch. Erickson no leads pressure. by five car lengths. Erickson has shaken off the challenge of the Arrow McLaren SP in real crash, bold driving. Crash in turn two. Yellow behind him. Yellow's Caution. out. It'll finish under caution. It's Sage Karam. Marcus Erickson with the spirit the of Ronnie Peterson on board with his helmet joins Kenny Brack as the only other Swede. You did it, buddy. You just won the Indy 500. Marcus Erickson wins the Indianapolis 500 in the most dramatic way. You want to talk about mental fortitude. Think about what this driver just went through in the last 10 minutes. Leading easily, red flag comes out, has to restart. You take a second parade lap, think about your family and everybody that got you to this point. You are an Indy 500.